Hi, I'm Dan Danford. I'm presenting a series of podcasts for dadsdivorce.com where we're talking about some financial issues. Uh, one of the questions we get today, as a matter of fact, I'm going to share with you from a viewer, uh, is about the stock market. Uh, in particular, should I buy stocks? And the question we have is, I'm trying to get started saving and investing, but the market news is terrible and I'm not very knowledgeable about stocks or investing. What do you suggest? Uh, it's a great question and now's a terrific time to be talking about that. Uh, first of all, investing in the stock market isn't as complicated as it seems. Uh, I know there are 10,000 moving parts and so it looks like it's busy all the time and there's a lot of activity and it requires a lot of knowledge. And there are certainly people who get uh, very bogged down in all the details. As a matter of fact, there are people who make and lose fortunes just based on the details. So I'm not going to talk about those in great, in, in great detail today. Uh, what I'm going to talk about are some of the bigger uh, issues that, that investors face. And, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the stock market and how it works and what you ought to look for and how to make that work for you. Uh, so first thing first, uh, when you own stocks, you basically own a part of a company. Um, and as far as uh, market and economics go in the United States, uh, that has been a pretty good bet for the last century or more. Um, companies tend to outperform other investment vehicles that are out there. So what that means is, is that common stocks are a superior investment vehicle and that's a really important thing. Uh, your choices in the world are either, uh, if you've got extra money, either lending money to somebody in terms of buying a bond and that might be lending it to the government or lending it to a corporation or lending it to a, a municipality or buying equities, which is buying a share of the companies. Uh, generally speaking, if you loan money to the government today, you'll make about 3%, but the long-term history of that on, a, on government bonds is probably something like 5 or 6% a year. Historically, owning shares of a company performs better than that, simply because if that weren't true, the people who own companies would put their money in government bonds and take the easy 5 or 6% a year. Instead, they start corporations and then they, they manage those corporations to earn more than they might get someplace else. And if you own shares in that particular company, then you'll enjoy that accumulation as well. Uh, now, stocks range all across the board. There are uh, very conservative stocks might be things like public utilities or big um, industrial companies and, and those stocks probably provide a pretty steady uh, long-term uh, growth uh, plus the dividends that they pay. There are also highly speculative stocks. These are the companies that are new companies with new technologies or new innovations and, and because of that the people who own shares of those companies actually expect and get better returns than they get from those large companies. And so when people talk about stocks, I hear all the time people say, well, stocks are too risky or, or I know somebody who lost a bunch of money in stocks. I'm not saying that those things don't happen sometimes, but there are all kinds of stocks and it wouldn't be true of every single stock. Okay? And across the board, if you look the last 75 years of market performance, uh, common stocks have grown at something like 10 or 11 percent a year and bonds, which is loaning money to somebody, has been something like 5 or 6 percent a year. So over a long period of time, uh, stocks are a superior uh, accumulation vehicle and that's why people own them. Now the next question is over what time frame? And this too is very important. Uh, stocks, while they can be very volatile, and we'll go into a period of time right now when they've been incredibly volatile, um, those are, tend to be short-term periods of time. Uh, most investment advisors use five years as a benchmark. Generally speaking, if you're investing money for five years or longer, historically stocks have provided a better investment return. Now that isn't always the case and we're living through a period of time right now where it isn't the case. If you look back five years or ten years from today, that's not been the case. You would have been better with your money someplace else. But these instances are pretty rare and surprisingly if you had done the same look back a year or so ago when the market was up at 13 or 14,000, you would have felt that the market had had pretty good five year or ten year returns. So when you look is very important. Now the key to all this is, 
matching your objectives to how you want to invest. If you've got money, say you've set some money aside and you want to use that money for the down payment on a house in the next three or four years, then putting that money in stocks is not a very good idea because we can't predict what might happen in the stock market in one, two, or three years. However, if you're putting money away from your retirement, and your retirement is 10, 12 years down the road, since that's a time horizon that's longer than five years, then stocks are a pretty good bet. And so what we tell people when we're helping them do financial plans or we're helping them with investments is to figure out what each pool of money is to be used for and then let that pool of money help you decide how you ought to invest it. Historically, five years is the benchmark for stocks. If you're going to use, if the money is going to be used in five years or longer, then stocks make a good place to go. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out just for a second is, is about stocks being sort of a passive investment strategy. Um, when, when we own a company, like I own a company, Family Investment Center in St. Joseph, Missouri, um, I'm involved in the management of that company. I make decisions every day about, about you know, what's the best way to use resources, uh, what's the best way to improve, improve profitability and issues like that. But when I own a stock in a company, I'm basically letting somebody else make those decisions for me. And the reason I own stocks is because you think that the products are good, the company's good, and the management's good. So you buy the stock under that criteria and you hold it, but you aren't going to mess with the daily stuff. As a matter of fact, I'd, I'd encourage you to look at it every six months or a year and just see how it's doing. If one of those items changes. If the management isn't so good or, or they aren't performing very well or maybe a new competitor comes along with a more innovative product, if those things happen then you don't complain to management, you just sell the stock and find something else to use for it. So I guess those are the three points I want to hit. Number one, stocks are a superior investment vehicle for the long term. Number two, they are a long term strategy. You ought to be focused on five years or longer if you're using stocks. And number three, that they are passive, that you're going to sit back and you're going to let somebody else actually manage the company and make those decisions. So let's go back to the question. I'm trying to get started with savings and investing, but the market news is terrible. I'm not very knowledgeable about stocks or investing. What do you suggest? If you're just getting started, a great way to do that is with index funds. Index funds basically are mutual funds that own hundreds of stocks and they're built to match some particular index. The most popular is the S&P 500 index fund. S&P 500 are 500 large company stocks that are United States oriented companies. And that index is one that you see on TV all the time. They tell you how the S&P is doing. And this particular mutual fund owns those 500 stocks. So if the S&P goes up 5%, your portfolio will go up 5%. If the S&P goes down 10%, your portfolio will go down 10%. Now here's the good news. Index funds are basically run by computers and they don't have a lot of expenses involved so they're very, very inexpensive to operate and they don't do a lot of trading so they don't have very, good, they don't have very much in terms of tax consequences. So they turn out to be very good long-term accumulation vehicles. Now I'm not saying at some point in time you might decide to invest in some more speculative kinds of things and I'd encourage you to do that. But as you get started, um, I just start dollar cost averaging every month, put 50 or $100 into a, a, an index fund. Uh, maybe after you have several thousand dollars there, then put some of the money into an international index fund and just let that accumulate over time. At the end of five years, you'll be real pleased with the results. Okay, so that wraps up today's uh, discussion about the stock market. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about interest rates and how they affect us as individuals. Uh, be smart with your money.